A uh, little baseball meeting informally happening right now. Uh, no integrity in the reporting of the lockout at all from the number one baseball insider, which is why the coverage is as skewed as it is. And let's all uh, say it together. We hate the Knicks. What's up, Evan? How are you, I everybody? I hate the Knicks. You even a Knick, a Knick fan yesterday. Yeah, and they let me down. Knicks take a lead. Evan's happy. You Ooh. frauds. Knicks choke as they always do in the Ugh. fourth. Ugh. But I don't want to talk Nick basketball. Yeah, why bother? The only aspect of the Knicks I will bring up today, because I think you talk Knicks, uh, click, 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 um, is what I said a couple of days ago when the lockout uh, was about to begin. I wasn't paying attention. What would you say? You, know, I, you were not, because you were in uh, beast mode uh, during the lockout <laughs> convo. Yeah, what would you say? What I said was, this baseball lockout makes me angry at the Knicks. And the reason for that is... There is no baseball. Who knows when they'll settle it? I think they will settle at some point, but whatever. <laughs> they'll settle at some point. At some point. point. I don't know when the hell it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it, what it does, not having spring training or looking forward to opening day, it exposes the fact mm. that the Knicks suck. And that really pisses me off because Aww. we could have had a nice little month or two run there. Aww. No baseball, yeah. no football, Nick basketball. Well, and they've let us down. Well, they could have owned yeah. New York City. Well, you still have the New York Rangers and you still have Kevin Durant. So you got those two things going for you. Okay, Yuck. New York. That's what I say to that. <laughs> like, no joke. You, you get it, obviously. I get it. If the Knicks were a good basketball team right now, yes. in the moment, yes. they would own New York yeah, but right you're now. you're not, dude. But I want to be I so know, badly. I, I get it. They'd own New York. I want Everybody the Knicks be to be good so badly, Evan. Bro, you had a year last year. You should cherish that for the next I decade. I can't cherish this uh, <laughs> playoff loss. You want a playoff game. Uh, cherish it. I don't cherish it at all. Matter of fact, last year pisses me off. Because I, I, I bought it again. Yeah, I know you did. I bought it with my heart and my soul. And I'm tired of, uh, you know, it's, listen, my sports fandom is like a rom-com. You understand that? <laughs> no. I'm experiencing, I'm like the star of a rom-com. You know what a rom-com is? Yeah, it's a romantic comedy. Yeah. I've watched many. Like, I've professed my love, and my love has let me down. And I come back again. Desperately, pathetically, and profess my love yet again. And yet again, my love lets me down. No joke, being a Nick fan is like being a, uh, I don't know, let me think of a good uh, rom com actress. Like being in a bad Jennifer Aniston movie, <laughs> right? You know, do you ever watch the TV show Homeland? Uh, years ago, I watched okay. like a half a season. I, I believe my sports fandom is Homeland, and here's what I mean you remember by the that. the star of Homeland? Uh, the blonde. What's her name? No, the guy. The dude. Oh, the guy? Yeah. You mean the guy who was the terrorist, even though he was a war hero, who and then he became the a terrorist? Who was the star of Homeland? What's his name? Wasn't it Rupert Pupkin? <laughs> or Mandy Patankin? <laughs> no, that's a different... Mandy Patankin plays uh, yeah. a different guy, but yes. But yeah, that's the guy, right? Big part oh, of it, yes. Rupert Pupkin was from the De Niro uh, movie... Uh, the Woody Allen movie. Uh, Rupert Pupkin was... Uh, yeah, he was a stalker. Shoot. Anyway, go ahead. I'll think of it. Homeland, yeah. when you just thought you were going to be happy. When you thought, okay, I can shut the episode off. I'm about to smile. The terrorist would win. Pardon me Something a terrible would happen. King of comedy, Rupert Pupkin. I that, totally apologize. <laughs> I but I wasn't going to gonna be able to do the show without coming up with that answer. How'd you get to that? Yeah, Rupert Pupkin. Anyway, go ahead. No, so Homeland, my, uh, terrorism, my, war. Yeah, my fandom is that just when you think you're about to be happy, something awful happens. Like, if you're a Met fan, you think you're going to be happy. Here's Max Scherzer. Jacob DeGrom is healthy. Here's Star. Marte, lockout. You're a net fan, all 35 of us. We have three superstars. One of them can't play because he won't get vaccinated. The other one's a miserable quitter. The other one's got a knee injury. You're miserable. Like, you think you're going to be happy, and then something horrible happens. So your sports fandom is romantic comedy. That's fine. Yeah. My sports fandom is but, Homeland, but, and it sucks. But no, mine's worse, I have to tell you. No, it's not. Like, when you go into a Homeland Security... You're you're ready for the possibility of losing a skirmish, right? right? I'm just forlorn at love. <laughs> right. And in every romantic comedy I've ever seen, the star at the end of the movie finds love. Yeah. Love conquers all. Well, gosh darn it, Evan. I'm in love with the New York Knicks, and I never get my moment with the White Knight. Sorry, man. It never happens. It never happens. It'd be like, in a long comes Polly, 
if Ben Stiller doesn't bag Jennifer Aniston, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's the best example I got you off the top up, of my dome. I'm you sorry. End That's up all I got. home by yourself right. every single night. You're home playing Xbox at the end of the movie with a tear <laughs> coming down your face. And the movie ends and people go, what? <laughs> I wanted them to get together. Yeah, it ticks me off, man. Ticks me off. I understand. And losing to it. Philadelphia. And Philadelphia's going crazy last oh, night. Oh, Like it was game seven. No joke. If you didn't I, see I, it last I, night. I saw it. That oh. game opened up. You would have thought... It was Game 7 NBA Finals. I've never seen a regular season game other than maybe an insanity game, I suppose. And even then, we cheered the action on the court, right? Uh, they acted yesterday, those morons. There you go. Like, yeah. like it was Game 7. Yeah. But here's the difference. If it was Game 7, yes. they wouldn't have gotten 29, 8, and 8, or whatever he had last night. It would have been 2, 6, and 6. Meaning fouls. That's what I want to hear. Yeah, yeah. No That's good the crack I want to hear because there's an issue between New York and Philly, and you need to show it. Yeah, well, Thank listen, you, I've always expressed that I own that. That's on my resume. Now, earlier today, uh, for those of you that are uh, have an interest, I was in the same room as Mike Francesa. How'd it go? And I have to tell you, How'd it's it going to be disappointing to a lot of you. What? It was cordial. <laughs> It was cordial on both sides. Who said hi first? I said hi first. How'd you say hi? I was standing uh, holding court, as I do. Right. Talking to various people at once, pretending like I remember their names. Right. <laughs> right. And, uh, and here comes Mike off the elevator, and he had no choice. He's walking right to me. Oh. To go past me does to he, the stage. Does he look up and clearly see that you're there? He saw me. Okay. And I saw him. And the room stopped. <laughs> and so, honestly, it's one of the most fascinating things I've ever experienced. You have all these people in radio. I was at a radio convention earlier today. And they're waiting for the moment that he and I are in the same room. Right. Because I did about a half hour. I was interviewed, right? And then he and Dog were doing an award uh, presentation to take the same event. So he comes off the elevator, jacket and tie, very presentable as always. And eye contact is made, huh. and the room stood still. Yeah. What's going to happen? Now, as the room stood still, Spike, our boss, had a plant at the meeting with a video camera. Oh. Or I guess a phone, whatever. Right, yeah, yeah. This has to be captured. And this kid's job, I think his name is Jack. I don't know his last name. His job, the only reason he's there is to film this moment <laughs> in case it happens. Because everyone's wondering yeah. what's gonna happen Damn right. if Cartney and Francesa cross paths. And I will say this it went great. It went great. It lasted half a second. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, it was phenomenal. <laughs> I, of course, being a gentleman, hey Mike, how are you? Mike Francesa, being a gentleman. Hey there, Craig. And that was it. I have no time for fools today. No, 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 no. <laughs> like wind, passing wind. And that's what it was. Did you and have an urge to ask him anything? No, because I, like I said, I was doing my thing, and he was going to do his thing. Right. But we were, hi, Mike. Hi, Craig. And then uh, Spike no, goes, time, Jack, Mike. did you get it? Jack forgot to get it. Oh, come on. So there is no videotape that I'm aware that, of. That guy had one job. That's right. One job. Uh, yep. No what? No offense. No one cares about this radio convention besides radio geeks. Right. There's one thing they care about. One thing. Me and Mike. And he didn't record it. And the kid. And I. Spike is uh, to my right. And I can hear Spike because the room's dead now. Right. And I hear Spike going, Jack, Jack, <laughs> Jack, Jack. <laughs> Jack, like he, because he saw Mike come off the elevator. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, Jack, start rolling, start <laughs> rolling. Jack, I guess, was so overwhelmed uh, with the moment, he did not start rolling. There is no video of it, oh. and it's like it never happened. That's embarrassing. Unless someone else was videotaping there, I have no idea. I saw a bunch of uh, big time <laughs> executives there. With all the the camera phones in this world, you'd have to think by accident. Someone would somebody have it? filmed it. Like somebody was either filming Mike walking in or you hobnobbing with people you forgot the names of, and then coincidentally by luck got the video. You'd have to think, right? You would think something. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. 
I even saw uh, a WWE executive. A WWE? Vince yes. McMahon. No, not yeah. Vince McMahon. No. An old friend of mine who used to run DAZN <laughs> is now the EVP of development no. for WWE. I know what's going on. Oh, I'm sure they told you the storylines. <laughs> Really? Did they tell you that an 80-year-old Vince McMahon may wrestle at WrestleMania? No, I have no idea what's going on. Nor do I care. Nor do I even know that he was working at WWE. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Any so, regrets about your interaction with him? No, nah, literally, we, he walked past me. So, But well, he know, saw that I was there. There wasn't a part of you that wanted to try to create a conversation that lasted more than a second? Only to drive everyone else in the room bonkers. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I thought about that. But I think I kind of did that with my presentation today. Oh, did you? Yeah, because I was asked a lot of questions about like the business, about radio, yeah. about how program directors fail talent, and how, <laughs> yeah, how the how local radio's uh, dropping the ball in a lot of ways, <laughs> all, 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 nice. all those sorts of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but listen, we're gonna get all your calls. Uh, if you like me or in love with the Knicks and are disappointed that you can't even get a month of good Nick ball with the baseball lockout, we got that. We do have some updates on baseball, of course. And uh, some football news, big football news for the Giants and Jets. So looking forward to that as well. We'll get all your calls. You know the numbers.